gentlemen, welcome back to the shop. Today we're going to take a look at uh, all the steps required to talk to a GE Multilin Relay. Uh, on the bench today, I've got a, let's see if I can get this to focus. This is a GE 469. This is a motor relay. Um, they do have a more modern version of it. This one's been discontinued. doesn't really matter. The procedure is going to be very, very similar between this one, the 8 Series Relays, so the 850, 869, uh, 889, whatever the other one is. Um, the 750, the older 750, and then almost all of the substation relays, they call them the UR series relays. Um, so those are the 19 inch rack mount ones. Uh, I'll put a little picture of them up so you know what I'm talking about. Um, so that's your F35, your T60, your G90, your B90, whatever. All of those are the UR series. Um, there's little differences here and there that I'm gonna point out as we go. Uh, but for the most part, it's the same procedure. Now, unlike on the SEL relays where it's the same software, Accelerator works for every single SEL relay, there's different software for each of these. So I'm gonna show you how we do that as we go along. Um, first step, we're gonna download the Entervista Launchpad software. So you're gonna go to gevernova.com, search for Launchpad, or you can just Google it, that works too. Um, you do need to make an account with GE. Kind of annoying, doesn't take very long, make an account, and then you're click, gonna click uh, download, go through all the prompts and install it, it's not rocket science. Um, once you install Intervista Launchpad, you're gonna be greeted with uh, something that looks like this, this is sort of their, their landing page. This is kind of cool, I, it's sort of similar to SEL Compass, where you can automatically you know, get updates for firmware and uh, updates for the software and stuff like that. I, I don't really use it. Again, it's it tends to be more trouble than it's actually worth. Um, if I'm going on a job where I need to talk to an old relay or a new relay, I just double check that I have the software that I need. I don't, if you like managed a plant where you had a million things, like it might be worth uh, setting up like the document library and the software library and all that nonsense. But for a tester where I'm gonna see the one relay once every you know three years or something like that, it's more trouble than it's worth. So I'm just gonna show you some of the shortcuts to get to the point where we can just download the settings. Um, so we're gonna click on IED setup. And here I've already installed the 469 um, setup software. It's a separate program. So InterVista is essentially just like a repository where you can get the software you need. Um, but say we were doing, I don't know, uh, an eight series, right? So a newer 850 relay. Um, in here, so <laughs> InterVista Launchpad, click on IED setup, you get this. It essentially is just a list of all the setup software that you already have installed on your computer. And it's where you would go to find the new software. I have essentially a shortcut to the 469 software, right? I can open it from here, but that's not necessarily what I wanna do, cause it, it eh. it's just a shortcut. It's like more steps to find a shortcut. So what we can do, hit the Windows key and then search for 469 because I know I installed that one. And then you right click, open file location. I can copy that to my desktop. So I copy that shortcut to wherever I want. It makes it a little bit easier if you're doing the same kind of relay multiple times. Uh, we're gonna launch our 469 software. And then I need to get this fired up on the bench and we will take a look at the next couple steps to connecting to it. Okay, setup for this is uh, fairly straightforward. Number one, the relay has to be powered on, so let me do that. Takes a second or two to boot. Um, one thing that I need to note, well, number one, it's sideways because it's hooked up a little bit sketchy on my uh, home-built power supply. On the 469, this is an issue, I just say an issue, it's a super annoying thing. You need to have this stupid access jumper right here installed. It's kind of hard for me to show it to you, but um, right between C1, C2, I need to have a jumper installed. If you do not have that jumper installed, no matter what you do, you will not be able to pull the settings out of it. Um, so if you think you're hooked up right and you're having issues, double check that it doesn't have an access jumper um, port on the back of the relay, because that, that will prevent you from pulling the settings out of any port 
uh, or from changing the settings on the front panel. They do that for, I guess, security reasons. I don't know. It mostly just annoys me and all the other Relay guys I talk to. All we need now is to connect a generic uh, USB to serial adapter. So there's an RS-232 to USB adapter. Set point access light is on. That tells me that I will be able to change settings once I you know, get into the software. Um, so unlike on the SEL relays, uh, where there's a couple different settings that can change to mess you up, there's really not on these. So all of the ones that use a serial cable all have the same RS-232 settings. It's all eight data bits, uh, no parity and one stop bit. So they're all pretty much the same. We don't have to check any settings on there. A couple things on this first. So when you launch uh, the 469 setup software or the UR setup software or the eight series setup software, um, you've got this big main window. This is where we're actually gonna like look at all of the stuff. This is what's called our online window. So if I've got a, a big site with a whole bunch of relays that are networked together, I can have them all online at the same time and I can see different things at the same time. That's kind of cool. The way that we would do that is in the device setup, uh, you know, add a site, site one, whatever. And then I can add, you know, multiple different sites here. And if I'm, you know, networking them together, I can do all this stuff. And that's, that's awesome for the few people that actually need to do it that way. I don't, and you, as a guy watching this on YouTube, you probably also don't need that. Uh, if you're just testing relays, you're only going to be at the site, like I said, once every three years to test a handful of relays and you don't need to pull a bunch of data, you know, constantly. What I do is I just click the quick connect button, right? So we get our prompt, uh, our interface, you can either use serial or ethernet, um, the 469, the one that I have actually doesn't have an ethernet port. So that's worth noting. Uh, we have to use serial. Uh, COM port. So where do we find our COM port? So we'll go hit the Windows key, uh, device manager, and then we'll go down to ports, common LPT. Um, I know that COM1 and COM99 are things that already exist. If I unplug my serial cable, COM3 goes away. Okay, so COM3 is what I am connected to the 469 on the bench with. So that's my guy right there. Um, if for whatever reason you have like a little orange icon here, it says it's, uh, you weren't able to update the device driver or whatever. Uh, I show in a previous video how to manually update, um, USB serial drivers. Go check that out. If, uh, if it's, um, not showing up here as a COM port. So we're going to go quick connect device. COM3, and now here, like I said, there's not a lot that can change on these relays. Um, I've got 9600 and 19.2. Those are my, op my two options. So it's either 9600 or 19.2, and I can't remember which one it is. Uh, so we'll try one and see if that works. Oh, failed to connect. Okay, so it's the other one. So it's 9600. And that's about it. That's all you need to know. <laughs> um, connecting to these is a little bit easier. Uh, just navigating, make sure you have the right, um, uh, the right, sorry, the right software is kind of the pain in the butt. So device 469, quick connect, added to the site, quick connect list. Now, what I would do here, if I'm testing a bunch of 469s at this site, right? If I'm testing a bunch of whatever GE multi lane relays, the way that I'm going to keep track of everything. I'm not going to keep track of everything in this device setup online window. You can, it really doesn't make any difference. And honestly, it can kind of confuse the fact. So, uh, what I typically do is the one that I'm currently working on is the only one that is connected to my PC at any time. I'm going to right click here, make sure you don't right click on quick connect, uh, or down here, you're going to right click on the the line where it says 469 quick connect or 850 quick connect or you know f35 quick connect whatever it is right we're going to click read device settings and it is going to pull all of the settings out of the relay and we're going to save that file and it the save file is going to pull up right here or it's going to be in my my offline window so online window up top offline window down here 
All right, it is done downloading. We're just gonna save this. It doesn't necessarily matter. We're just gonna save this to my desktop for the time being. So this is gonna be... Uh... All right, uh, I mentioned this in my previous video, but I am very religious about the way that I name my relay settings files, just because it's really easy to get them confused from one to the other. And if you push the wrong settings into a relay, you can cause a very serious issue. So I'm very, very peculiar about the way that I uh, name my settings files here. We've got it listed. Um, so site, whatever the site is in this case, I have it just site. Um, but this would be, you know, warehouse one or power plant B, whatever the name of the site is, and then the, the circuit or the terminal, or in this case, it's a motor relay. So whatever the name of the motor is, um, I don't have a motor, so it's just going to be bench test, but it goes site and then circuit. And then the type of the relay so is a GE 469. Uh, and then the date, I typically do it in ISO format, which is uh, year, month, day. It makes it easier for computers to sort. So 2024, 04, 25, and then AF or AL. So as found, this is the relay settings that were in it when I showed up. These are not what I'm leaving in it. Um, if I do anything to test it or change it or whatever, I'll save my as left settings file at the end. I'll, I'll pull them down again and save an as left settings file after I'm done monkeying with it. If I haven't done anything to it, I have the one as, as found settings file, I'm done. Um, so that's what we're doing here. So this is site, uh, bench test, GE 469, 2024, uh, blah, 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 as found. Cool. Boom. Done. And now it should pop up in my offline settings file. Look at that. It's all here. Now let's get into the settings a little bit. Uh, navigation on these. Be aware which one you're in. So if you have a bunch of settings files saved, uh, they'll be in your offline file, right? So I'll have, you know, this one and then I'll have like an offline file or my as left file for the same relay and then I'll have all of the other relays for that circuit um, they'll all be every 469 settings file that I have will be linked in this um, settings file or is it's offline area this little offline window um, it's sort of important to note they handle differently than the SEL settings files where you can have multiple settings files and multiple different types of relays in one RDB file, one database file. Whereas here, everything is individual. So like if I go to my desktop, if I go to my desktop, what the fuck don't I have a link to my desktop? If I go to my desktop, um, that settings file is right here individually. That is not in an RDB file like an SEL settings file is. This is a standalone, you know, dot four, six, nine files. It's a settings file all by itself. So just something to be aware of. It's not going to go into a separate database file. This is just by itself. Um, now, if I move this off of my desktop, I will have to relink it to, you know, let's go ahead and do that. So if I cut this out of here and then I stick it in my testing tech tips folder, uh, if I try to open it out of here, I think it'll actually be like temporarily linked, but um, I'll relaunch the 469 setup. Ooh, look at that. Uh, the following setting files were removed from the environment because it couldn't find where that file was. So we're gonna hit okay. And we'll see now it's not in my offline file. It's also not in my quick disconnect. So I'll have to, or my quick connect. So we'll reconnect to it here. But if I want to bring up that file or if, you know, an engineer gives me a settings file that I need to put into a relay, we're going to have to go right click here in your offline window, click add existing settings file. And now we need to navigate to the pain in the butt to find. Anyway, so here we go. Uh, site bench test there. That's that settings file site bench test GE 469 as found boom. So that is how we bring in a separate and existing settings file into our your setup software, just to be aware of that. Um, if I wanted to push those settings into the existing relay, just like we did on the last one, we're gonna go, uh, yeah, here, write settings to device, to our quick connect device. Again, this is why I only have one quick, quick connect device. I don't make a whole bunch of uh, different connections in my online window because if I only have one serial cable it's really easy to think you're doing something that you're not 
you're, you, you could be sending, you know, this bench test settings file into a live circuit somewhere else because it's, you know, networked or something like that. I, I don't necessarily like doing that unless I have a, a very specific application for it. For testing, just do everything through quick connect device. And then, you know, the only thing that you've got your cable plugged into is the only thing that you're currently working on. Just makes life a lot simpler and uh, mitigates any mitigates any screw ups. So we're going to push that as found settings file back in. Just it takes a second. Okay, so we pushed essentially the same settings file that we pulled out of it. We push it back in. Uh, a couple other things: uh, the way that the settings are laid out. So you've got the the settings settings group here. Uh, like the CTs and the PTs, they're set up in system setup, go figure. Uh, and then they pop open in this little window. It's good to know, uh, protection. Most of the stuff is going to be in protection. It's going to be our thermal model, stuff like that. That that's, that's kind of cool. And then the actual live values are under this other tab, actual values, go figure metering data. Generally, this is what you're going to look at if you're you know, troubleshooting something, it's all gonna be in this window. Now, uh, there's a couple other things, not that one, update firmware. That's good to know, you have to have the firmware, the, up, the firmware update file separately. I think you can get that right off GE's website, it's good to know. Now, uh, these two right here, event recorder and waveform capture. So if we go to the event recorder, this is very similar to the SER that we had in the SEL relays, so it's just a, a list of all of the things that have happened to this relay. It's not as easy to configure. So some of the, uh, some of the data that you might want to see in your events recorder aren't necessarily all going to be here, but you know, you, you get, you get some decent stuff. Um, we can see here, this one was taken out of service 2020, uh, sorry, 2018. And you know, I just started messing with it today. So there you go. Uh, yeah, put in service 2017, taken out in 2018. So yeah, this one hasn't seen a lot of use, but it's kind of an interesting thing. Um, you can click on an individual thing. So let's say motor started right here. If I click on this one, it tells me how much, uh, current happened when it took this little snapshot. So it's kind of nice. Um, you can save that offline to see for a future date or send that to an engineer, whatever you want to do. The other one is the waveform capture. This one, I think, is a little bit harder to set up. Uh, select which trigger you would like. Interesting. Yeah, this one has never recorded an oscillography before, so it must have never, either never been set up correctly or never actually saw a real trip. So we'll go wave, uh, trigger waveform, and we'll select that, and then go launch viewer. It's not as as easy, it's not as configurable as the uh, SynchroWave event that SEL has. The ones for the 8 series relays and SR series relays are a little bit more configurable. They're a little bit better. Um, most of the multi-lin relays have kind of a cheesy sort of half-assed uh, waveform capture function. Uh, really on this, if it's got like differential, like that's you'd be able to say, oh, well, one of my CTs is backwards. Like that's really the only thing you're gonna be able to get out of these. But uh, it, it's good to know that they're available and it's good to know that they're, uh, how to pull the events out, right? So there you go, guys. That's the, the absolute basics. That's how you can uh, download and upload settings to and from a GE Multilin relay. Again, this is the 469, but it's very, very similar across most of the multi-lin platform. Um, most of the things look very similar. The one that I would love to show you guys, uh, the one function on here that I would love to show you that just isn't here, there is a protection summary function when you're testing, especially like the 850s or the 869s, 889s, whatever. Um, you get a really, really nice like, hey, here's the protection function that's enabled and it goes to this output. Here's that, that summary is really nice and they just didn't implement it on the 469s order. So it is what it is. There you go. You got some other cool like live monitoring stuff. Is nice, you click around, see what you get. But uh, yeah, don't be intimidated by it. You really, there's not too much that you can screw up on this end unless you 
you know, accidentally shove like a blank settings file in, which I've done before. It's really embarrassing, but uh, yeah, stay safe and I'll see you on the next one, guys. Thanks.